Hey guys, I'm Ella. Okay, so Samsung just released the Tab S8 Ultra, and this is their very first Ultra tablet. It has very nice specs with an incredibly big screen, but all of this would kind of go to waste if the software experience sucked. Now, I've never used an Android tablet before, so this was completely new for me. I've actually been using an iPad Pro for the past several years, mainly for university, and it's kind of the default recommendation for a tablet. However, after thoroughly exploring the software on the Tab S8, including Samsung DeX, I actually found myself preferring the Tab S8's One UI 4 software over iPad OS for many things that I do, especially my schoolwork. So today, let's take a detailed look at their software for things like multitasking and note-taking. All right, so One UI 4, which is based on Android 12 and iPad OS 15, actually look quite similar. They both have a home screen and a separate app screen. You can put widgets on both of the home screens, but they're only interactive on Android. So if you want to play or pause the music directly from the Spotify widget, you can only do that on Android. And I do like the interactive widgets. Now, both of these have a search bar. You just do a quick swipe to access it, and then you can do things like search for an app, or something in your settings, or do a Google search. And One UI does have a few extra features, such as the extra dim toggle, which I do find quite nice at night. Now, of course, the iPad has its own set of very helpful ecosystem features, like AirDrop and Shared Clipboard. Those could be very helpful and convenient if you also use other Apple products. But overall, between these two, it's pretty similar to how iOS competes with Android in terms of the looks. But unlike on a phone, one of the most important features on a tablet is multitasking. Because how good a tablet is at multitasking is really what determines how effectively you can get work done on it. So the iPad has a dock at the bottom and the Tab S8 has an edge panel. It can be on either the left or right side of the screen. You can put apps in both the dock and the edge panel. And you also have your recently opened apps there and also a shortcut to all of your apps. But the Edge panel in One UI actually does a lot more than just storing apps. You can actually swipe on the Edge panel to change what it shows. It can also provide shortcuts for certain tasks, display your reminders, and even give you a clipboard with a list of the things that you copied. These are all of the possible things that you can add into the Edge panel. The vast majority of the time, I just have my Edge panel showing the apps, so exactly like how it is on the iPad's dock. But the clipboard is quite useful for me too. So there are two ways of opening up multiple apps at the same time on iPadOS and One UI. One is split screen, and the easiest way to get this is to just open up an app and then drag in the second one that you want from either the dock or the edge panel. The iPad only supports two apps, left and right, but the tab actually supports left and right, up and down, and even a three-way split with three apps. On the iPad, you can only do a half and half or a third and two thirds configuration, but on the tab, you can adjust the configuration however you want. Both of them save the split screen combo in the recently opened apps view, but on the tab, you can also more permanently save the combo into your edge panel. And the other way is the slide over or pop-up view, and you do that by dragging the app on top of the one that's already opened. So you can open an unlimited number of apps in this view, but on the iPad, they kind of stack on top of each other so you'll only see one app at a time. You can't resize them and they'll always snap to either the left or right side of the screen. And on the tab, you'll see all of the pop-up apps at the same time, but you can resize them and place them anywhere on the screen. This feature is helpful for certain things, but it can get messy quite quickly. And on both, you can easily hide away the pop-up apps. You can also quickly swap the positions of all the open apps. And when it comes to the files, so the iPad and the tab have a pretty good file system. And on both, you can directly drag and drop files into various apps. So the tab S8 does provide a bit more functionality and flexibility for multitasking. It can have three apps in split screen and many resizable pop-ups open at the same time, which is really handy for taking notes from a video while having another window to search things up. But it's still not revolutionary by any means. And my main problem is that for simple tasks, like opening and closing multiple apps. It's just one click on a normal computer, and then you can also snap them with hotkeys, 
but it's this whole motion on the tab in the iPad, and it's just far slower. Also, neither of the tablets keep background apps open the same way that a computer does. But the Tab S8 does have something extra, which is Samsung DeX. So you press this button in order to enter DeX. DeX shares all of the data and apps and everything with the regular One UI system, but it's like a totally different operating system. And I think this is what really makes the Samsung tablets stand out from the iPad Pro. So DeX is laid out very differently. It's much more similar to how Windows is laid out with this dock at the bottom. You can pin apps there, and it also shows you the time, the battery info, stuff like that. Now, DeX also behaves a lot more desktop-like. Opening up multiple apps is always just one click. And for every app, there's a close and minimize button. You can place the apps wherever you want, size them however you want. You can also snap them to the left or right. But most importantly, all of the open apps are actually kept open like they are on a computer. So you can quickly shuffle through them without missing a beat. Back in regular One UI tablet mode, and same with on iPadOS, the operating system will close apps in the background whenever it deems necessary. For example, if I'm halfway down a OneNote document and I go to some other app, when I come back to OneNote, it sometimes will have to reload from the home page. But in DeX mode, an open app will always stay exactly where it is. But DeX isn't perfect either. And one of the most annoying things is that the apps don't resize together. So sometimes there's awkward gaps. And resizing them isn't that convenient since you have to drag on the edge. But DeX is still far superior than One UI and iPadOS for multitasking, mainly because jumping between multiple apps is just so much faster on DeX. It's almost as good good and fast as it is on macOS and Windows. However, the apps in DeX are still very much Android apps. And in general, the iPad has more quality apps and also more apps optimized for tablets than the Google Play Store. I know there are lots of more professional apps that are only available on the iPad, like Procreate and Affinity Photos. Android is really lacking more professional apps. For example, there really aren't any photo editing apps on Android that come close to Affinity Photos or Photoshop for iPad. And for handwriting note-taking apps, so what I use as a student, the iPad has a lot of great options like OneNote, Notability, and GoodNotes. And on the tab, the only one that I liked is OneNote. I definitely think having a better selection of apps is a huge advantage for the iPad. If you utilize iPad-exclusive apps, then it's probably not gonna be worth it for you to relearn a potentially worse set of apps just to utilize the better multitasking on the Samsung. But I primarily use OneNote for my note-taking, and actually, the note-taking experience is pretty similar on these two tablets. On both, OneNote is practically the only good note-taking app that's cross-platform and allows you to nicely annotate documents. But actually, OneNote isn't really optimized on either platform. You can see a lot of pen input lag. The line trails quite a bit behind the pen tip. It's still very usable though, and I have written a lot of notes in OneNote. But if you don't use OneNote, there are quite a bit more options on the iPad, like Notability and GoodNotes. They still do have a bit of pen input lag, but not nearly as bad as in OneNote. However, the main issue that I have with those apps is that you can't see your notes on a Windows computer, and also in my past experience, they don't really sync that reliably with a MacBook either. The only app that has perfect pen tracking on the iPad is Apple Notes, but it's really not a good note-taking app for students because you can't draw in the same row as typed words. Overall, it's just very limited, so I wouldn't use it. Now, other than OneNote, I really couldn't find any good handwriting note-taking apps on Android, but the first party Samsung Notes is actually surprisingly good. It's much more feature rich than Apple Notes, and it has perfect pen tracking with no noticeable latency. Its features are actually very similar to Notability. You can annotate PDFs and images, and also handwrite anywhere on the screen, and transition between typed and handwritten words seamlessly. But just like Notability, on the iPad, Samsung Notes lacks cross-platform support. You won't be able to see your Samsung Notes on your MacBook, but it is available on Windows and also Samsung phones. So if that's what you use, then the Samsung Notes app could be a decent option. And as for the Apple Pencil and the S Pen, so I do prefer the S Pen besides its awkward charging position. My favorite thing about it is that it has a button right here. On note-taking apps, I can hold it down to erase. On the Apple Pencil, I have to double tap to erase, which is slower to do and also 
little less reliable. Okay, so overall, I really do prefer One UI's more flexible and functional multitasking. And I do make use of decks basically all the time, especially when I'm doing my schoolwork. And since I use OneNote mainly for note-taking, I prefer the overall note-taking experience more on the tab, especially with the S Pen. But outside of note-taking and video watching, for any of the more pro workloads, iPadOS has a pretty significant advantage. If I were to edit photos on the iPad, Photoshop and Affinity Photo would just be so much better than what Android can offer. So it really is a shame that companies aren't really developing for Android tablets. I think if more apps became available on it, then it can certainly be a better experience for many people. It already is a better experience for me for note-taking, but from a potential buyer's perspective, if I thought that I might also want to get into photo editing or maybe drawing, then I will probably still go with the iPad as my first choice. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Let me know your thoughts on iPad OS and One UI 4 down below. Also, I am planning on making more videos about the Tab SA Ultra. So if there's anything that you want to see, also leave that in the comment down below. Here are the rest of my social medias. So you can follow me on those platforms if you would like to. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye.